crack on now in terms of, of introduction. So for those of you who don't know me, um, I'm Mark Ingram. I, I founded Real Talent Matters um, 2017. Um, Diego is obviously our guest speaker today in terms of the, the subject that the, the webinar is, is based on. Um, so Diego is currently based in Houston. Um, he's had a, a, a long career within the energy sector. He's currently with a multinational organization, um, 25 years plus experience in oil and gas with, um, you know, looking after large numbers of employee organizations. So, you know, 25,000 plus. The organization he's with has a, a significant footprint um, in the US, you know, several thousand employees, manufacturing operations in 10 states. He oversees one of the, the company's divisions, which is based in Houston. And he has held senior management roles uh, in China, Korea, Japan, six years based in Beijing, Diego, and later in Europe and Africa with, you know, London and Dubai, amongst other places. So during this, um, how best to describe this, when I first spoke to Diego, he, he's obviously extensively traveled. He has um, experienced firsthand um, the aftermath of, of, of SARS, H1N1 flu, the Fukushima earthquake and nuclear crisis that followed. And he was also in West Africa with Ebola, um, you know, besides the security the issues, et cetera. Um, and now he's in Houston with, during the COVID. So um, when we first spoke, I asked him, you know, how was his timing and luck in, in terms of where he's been based during these experiences? But um, hopefully he's, he's you know, in a, in a great position to, to help pass on his, his personal thoughts and experience of those, of those situations. Um, so wherever you are in the pandemic curve, we've all suffered considerable disruption to our lives and, and daily work, operations, supply, distribution chains, logistics, clients, candidates, we, we've all been severely affected. So um, during the presentation today, we, we will try and share, or Diego will try and share some of his experience and learnings and some frameworks uh, for preparing the plans and, and re reassuming and recovery of operations. We don't know how long the virus will last um, at this point. So, you know, I think we should be prepared for uh, during these calls, maybe 18 months of disruptions as, as we all know. So without further ado, I will uh, pass the reins over to So Diego, I'll okay, hand this over to you. Hopefully you can hear loud and clearly. Okay, yes, indeed. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, wherever you are. For those uh, of the Muslim faith, Ramadan Karim for everyone. Um, just a, a small disclaimer, I'm here in, a, in a, my personal capacity. I'm not representing my company. So uh, um, I'm just going to share on, uh, what is my, my experience on, in crisis management. <laughs> this is one of... Uh, one of the many, unfortunately, that uh, a large organization and a person in a professional career uh, may have faced. So this is, this is one of, my, of mine. Um, I'm going to also share some uh, things that I have uh, heard and, uh, and, uh, and got uh, from my colleagues uh, and my network, uh, just that I found the experience. And of course, I'm coming from a B2B environment, uh, industrial uh, goods, and uh, not consumer uh, space. So uh, there is a, let's say, a, a limitation, and of course, a bit of context, uh, given the countries where we operate and the realities where, let's say, the, the experiences that we are uh, getting uh, are, are being, uh, being uh, formed. So uh, three chapters we're gonna cover let's say, what we have learned from the past. Of course, we all had uh, crisis management protocols in place, or, or most of us. Um, and finally, I'm gonna share uh, what I think, uh, and, and listening and, and, and uh, having a talk to a few consultants that we work with, what uh, the road to recovery and, and uh, what is essential to keep in mind as a, as a roadmap. And as a, I, I've also had a, a bit of a framework to plan, uh, let's say, going forward. So if you go, Mark, to the next slide, please. Uh, 
as, as I mentioned, we all had a, a crisis management uh, teams in, in place or, or protocols. Uh, we immediately, we triggered these, uh, uh, we triggered the, the crisis kind of was evident that uh, was a, an, a larger and unfolding. For you to know, we have operations in China, we have operations in Italy, Indonesia, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Middle East, uh, um, of course, Japan, as we mentioned before, uh, Korea, we have a commercial office, and uh, Italy, we have a large, uh, and actually, let's say the company is based in, in the worst heat town in, in Italy, and of course, the US, uh, Argentina, Mexico, and uh, Brazil, Colombia, and so on. So, just to a bit of a hint, uh, by middle January, it was, uh, and through my colleagues, and uh, they were already calling me, and uh, you know, you keep in touch because it was a close Chinese New Year. We already knew, and uh, let's say, I personally knew that this is, uh, was going to be something to be worried about uh, because of what uh, you were hearing and the things that you were hearing on the, on the internet and so on. And knowing how things are, Let's say when uh, something is on, on, on the top, uh, you know that there is much more uh, serious issue underneath the water. So uh, personally, I, I kind of uh, mentally prepared for that. Then um, when, uh, when the Chinese New Year uh, was uh, celebration was suspended, we all knew that this was something serious. And uh, then when uh, things in Italy hit, uh, we also got uh, firsthand uh, serious uh, exposure to that. So. Um, one thing that we did uh, different than other crises, and uh, of course nobody had the, the, the COVID uh, or the coronavirus uh, uh, emergency manual on the shelf, but uh, we did have some protocols uh, in place. One thing that we did different in this case is we added to the, to the senior management uh, emergency committee uh, group uh, that we have one at corporate level and then one at uh, each uh, regional uh, level. So in a way that we coordinate resources and actions uh, and we keep consistency and, and we share best practices uh, across the organization. One thing that we did different was to add a, a medical doctor in, in, in each of the groups, kind of to help us to filter and to provide uh, medical guidance and, and professional guidance to, to, to the decision-making process, which has been proved to be extremely useful and for obvious reasons. Um, another thing that we did uh, quite uh, rapidly was to acquire testing capabilities and uh, mostly to those uh, countries where we have a uh, industrial, let's say large industrial uh, footprint, because it was evident that the best way to know what is happening was to get the testing capabilities. So we uh, acquired the, the, the kits um, that allow us to get quickly the people test. We, call, we cannot jump the queue. The queue is the queue because at the end of the day, the, 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 the tests are run by, by government uh, control agencies. But the thing is, it allows us to, in the scarcity that we all face and the uncertainty, to, to get uh, that uh, testing capability uh, in-house. Um, and of course, we, we quickly uh, put the uh, people working uh, remote. Uh, just to give you an idea, we declare, uh, let's say, teleworking in, uh, in average two weeks before each government in each location advised uh, to do that. In some places a week before because of, you know, cultural reasons and, uh, uh, but uh, let's say we had, uh, or we have today 90% of the people working, uh, doing teleworking and it was uh, done almost uh, immediately. Uh, in some locations we are already seven or eight weeks uh, from te uh, doing teleworking. It works uh, n n with no major issues. We have to adapt with everyone some IT tools, adding uh, some of the, the newest uh, teleconference that are more productive and, and, and easy, easy working and with better, uh, I, uh, it allows connect uh, with the outer world. Um, we have uh, continued to work in most of our industrial uh, facilities. The only ones that have stopped are the ones that were mandated by government, like uh, in Italy at the, at the peak. Now we are back in Italy. In China, we were ordered to stop. We have been working in China, I think, uh, four weeks already. Um, we had some, uh, some uh, in, uh, in Mexico, in Argentina. Uh, in Argentina, we had uh, for instance, uh, some waiver uh, program. Uh, so we have 
70% stop, 30% working, and so on. So U.S., uh, we continue working uh, as we are an essential group, energy-related uh, companies. We were given the okay to continue working. So we have been, even though um, in some countries uh, we have were ordered to stop, we have been working throughout the crisis. So, Mark, if you, if you want to go to the, to the next one. Um, a bit of, of what uh, we did, uh, and uh, I'm sure most of the people uh, has done, is uh, once the uh, crisis was evident, uh, the first thing we implemented was the social distancing. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the space, uh, refitting, uh, meet, uh, meeting rooms. Uh, um, the number one rule that we did was to stop uh, people on, on meeting in uh, cafeterias and so on, which is uh, an area of a uh, quick spread. Um, we stopped uh, receiving visitors um, and we started uh, quickly screening protocols uh, for both employees and third parties. And this is something that uh, for me was uh, quite clear uh, to be done uh, because it's what we have done in the H1N1 and in the Ebola crisis even with some questionnaires in some locations, uh, uh, just to screen a few, few of the things on the, on the symptoms. And uh, we also implemented the, quite quickly the, the traveling ban uh, for, uh, with different years. We have a lot of people traveling. Uh, so I think that these two rules that were the obvious and the simpler that the government has, uh, has uh, recommended, they were quickly implemented. Of course, awareness campaign was, uh, was uh, day one. A lot of confusion and over information and misinformation going on. So we, we believe that key is to give some peace of mind to employees and and the company to be and the leadership of the company to be very present and to be the, the source. I wouldn't say the, 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 the primary source of information, but they say people we trust uh, people and we are uh, social uh, animals. So we trust to, to the ones that uh, we know. So I think that the company providing a simple and but clear uh, data has been uh, important to 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 have a uh, awareness and people on board uh, which uh, I, I will elaborate in later and of course consistency between what we say what you say and what, what you do uh, it was very important when we have to let uh, ask people to stay home uh, because of quarantine or self quarantine a big concern of the people is uh, it has been uh, losing their income. So uh, even though we have uh, multiple uh, jurisdictions and different uh, local regulation and, 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 and employment contracts, one thing that we have uh, tried to do and consistently is not to penalize people uh, because of lost incomes, even if uh, they are not a confirmed case. And of course, and I think that uh, we saw also in those cases Colleagues are starting to be fearful on, 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 on the colleagues that are affected. And there is a, or at least it was at the very beginning, the very beginning of the crisis, a risk of people getting stigmatized. And uh, so we try to, uh, of course, uh, within the, the rules of confidentialities, but there are also rules of, uh, there was a public uh, crisis health. You are also bound to certain rules with the authorities. So, it was a fine line to walk, and uh, and it's uh, all about in the in uh, how you uh, manage the communication, how you properly address that, uh, which is very different country to country, culture to culture, even within the same company. You know, so I'm, I'm sure you you can relate to that. So, Martin, if you want to to go to the next slide, you go. Just just uh, have a quick pause there for. Um... I was going to I was going to pause quickly just in case there were any questions, um, and to allow you to have a drink of water. It's, um, but uh, I think it's because guys, we, we, for all those that are listening, we had to change the screens just slightly before we started. So Diego, I I I um I haven't got access. Can you see the Q and A's that are coming in? Um, it's in the chat box. I think yeah. it's because I'm sharing the the. I think it's because I'm sharing the slides. I didn't want to disrupt. Yeah, no, it. I, there is there is a, 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 a question about screening uh, to ensure compliance with the safe return to work. I, I will address that at the end if, if if you allow me. Of course, sure. Yeah, I didn't want to disrupt the screen with the with the Q and A coming. No worries. 
if, if, if you want, yeah, let's, let's go to, to, the, to the next slide. Of course, uh, let's say this is a, we are already way past to it, but I mean, at the very beginning, uh, PPEs was very important. Uh, you know, we have to learn what is the difference between surgery mask and N95 mask. Why to use one, so why not to use the other ones? Costs were very different, so uh, shield fa uh, faces and, uh, you know, many other things. Uh, we quickly implement some, uh, uh, because again, being familiar with the previous situation, uh, very different uh, protocol for, for cleaning and, and screening. Supply was a nightmare uh, for uh, PPEs and cleaning products. We are very well passed over that, very well established as a supply chain for all of that already. Uh, another thing that we did uh, as uh, things, uh, as information was coming, is to uh, start uh, having conversation with those uh, more vulnerable uh, and uh, risk uh, prone uh, groups, uh, you know, persons with pre existing conditions. And again, we have to put a, a process in place uh, for confidentiality reasons with the people, but has been very important. I was sharing with Mark that uh, that is uh, one of the things that I see as a challenging uh, topics going forward. Uh, because one thing is to have out of the workplace of uh, those employees that are uh, uh, doing uh, teleworking activities or but um, those in production and manufacturing that are a hands-on job uh, is uh, much more difficult and uh, sometimes it's not the employees only but also the the family uh, group they may have a spouse or children or or parent at home uh, that is uh, having a, a pre-existing condition so this is a, a very, very critical point, and this is something that we are, we are taking uh, uh, very seriously. And, and, and again, it, it, it requires a great level of detail and, and, and confidentiality and, and discretion, but it's something that is critical and essential to, to, to give employees a and, and, uh, peace of mind uh, in the next uh, months ahead until uh, some uh, kind of uh, treatment or, or vaccine is, is available. Of course, uh, I mentioned about testing and uh, contact tracing uh, system in place was uh, of, uh, very, very useful. And I will share in the next uh, slide some figures. Um, I know it's uh, testing and uh, contact tracing is not uh, bulletproof, but is a, is a key firewall uh, against uncontrolled spread. I think that that is the main uh, concern that public health authorities are having and us as, a, as, a, as a managers are, are having to have an uncontrolled spread that it, it compromises operations and, 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 and greatly affect uh, uh, reputationally and, and, uh, and um, from a health uh, perspective over, over operations. Uh, contingency protocols, of course, this has been evolving because uh, information has been made available on what to do, when to do it, and uh, how quickly to escalate those. Uh, and uh, the protocol for returning to the workplace for those positive cases. Uh, and, and here I, I will link to the previous question, Mark. Uh, let's say one thing that we learn in, uh, along the process is uh, scanning temperature. It's a technology that has been evolving since Ebola to here. Uh, there are new technologies coming uh, into, into play. Uh, some supplies, uh, people have uh, gone and bought uh, thermometers and uh, contactless thermometers and they have found out that the, the, the tolerance or the precision range is uh, unfit for what they were trying to do. So we also have to adjust and to make sure we were buying the right uh, equipments. And for returning to work, what we are doing is uh, when, uh, whenever an employee test positive, uh, we let uh, we let's say isolate uh, contact trace uh, the, 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 the his network family and, 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 and colleagues then we do for, uh, let's say we follow the, the, the symptoms when uh, symptoms are, have disappeared we do another test uh, we make sure if it, until the test is negative then we do a we let a couple of days uh, to elapse we do another test and we two negative tests in, in, the, in the lapse of, uh, of uh, three, four days. And uh, prior to a medical interview with our doctor, um, we go for, through a questionnaire with a few things. 
uh, we allow the employee to come back to work. Um, and then we continue the, the screening of, 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 the, of the employees uh, um, around uh, him. Um, one thing that we debate a lot uh, was to, to, to when, when we test one employee, what was the right point to even quarantine the, the colleagues in close proximity or to uh, test the colleagues in close proximity? There is not a fixed answer to that. But in general terms, uh, as uh, you have uh, 24 hours to 48 hours from the testing until you get the results, we have decided not to uh, isolate uh, the, the network immediately after. Uh, but with what we are doing is only with a positive uh, confirmation, positive test, we are just then um, doing the, the isolation or we are uh, quarantining the network. Uh, we test them. And then uh, 24 hours, 48 hours after, we know if the, let's say, whoever has been with the, with the, inf the infected person uh, um, are uh, positive or not. If you want, Mark, you can go to the next slide. And then let me see if there is another question here. Uh, no. So I, I will. Yeah, I I can see various things popping up. I just can't see the questions, Diego. So I will let you just. Uh, Either keep them until the end, or or build that in during during your what you're talking about. Okay, so um, let me then uh, go to the to the to the to the other slide. A bit to share, let's say what uh, we have found. Um, the first thing is there has been a very effective uh, um, detection mechanism in place. Again, uh, testing and tracing is, is of the essence. Uh, social distancing, uh, the traveling restrictions that we have imposed, but most uh, importantly, uh, screening people at the, before uh, getting into the workplace. Um, as uh, all HSE issues, this is very behavioral related. Um, and this is a major challenge going forward because uh, you can change behavior but sustain a different behavior for such a long period of time. I think, as you said, we have to be prepared for 18 months uh, minimum. Um, you can change, uh, we, we have changed the, the, the working conditions and rule in high traffic areas, I have said. Uh, main areas of uh, spread are uh, locker rooms public transportation and, uh, and, uh, and uh, um, cafeterias and coffee machines because this is a kind of a gathering uh, places and uh, people, uh, uh, this is, uh, you have a kind of a cross fast and quick uh, cross pollinization there is if, you, if you allow me. Yeah. Um, and, but the rules and the change of social behavior are a kind of a, a, a safety net to to, together with the contract tracing and the, and the testing to minimize uh, that. Uh, up to today, we have tested uh, in, in the US 20% uh, of our workforce. And uh, here is, a, is a not worth it to mention that 50% of that are external contractors. So I'm, I'm counting that. Uh, so we have uh, done roughly 1,000 tests uh, up to today. Uh, and that includes also some family members of our employees that at the early stages were not uh, a testing capability available or so, or the queue was too long. So we were also doing that uh, for, uh, for, uh, for uh, a peace of mind of the employees. A quick detection and, and testing has allowed to, to isolate and, and, uh, and to, let's say, to test uh, people uh, around. In some cases, we have tested up to 20 persons uh, that has been in contact with a given uh, suspected case. Uh, today, after the, out of the, out of the, of the uh, almost 1,000 uh, tests that we have done in the US, we have only 10 positive cases, um, with a handful of them, uh, infection has been uh, even with, with people that was not at the workplace. So we know that uh, some people have been traveling at the early stages. Um, and but we have uh, a counted this, so which is roughly two, three percent of our population uh, has been uh, declared positive. Uh, and um, 
as I said, as we have been working on the on, on the process, and these people uh, has been coming to the workplace and tested positive, even you have the possibility to spread the, the disease when you are asymptomatic. And, uh, and, and uh, testing the network, we have found very little of that. And uh, we believe that is because of all the other measures that are helping you to, if you even have a, a spread in uh, the workplace, you are having a very, very low R, right? the, the famous uh, R ratio that we have, uh, we have all learned about it. Uh, so you are having very, very little or very limited, and you are uh, able to quickly detect and contain. Sure. Uh, one thing that has been very reassuring for the employees is to see that uh, there has been a quick, uh, clear, and simple communicated protocols and actions. And uh, we can see the, the anxiety at the first uh, week of, of it. And uh, we were kind of uh, counting on not having any case. When the cases start to appear, you see a spike on the anxiety of the people. And when um, people see you are doing uh, three, four, five times, uh, how, let's say, um, that, um, quick and uh, straightforward the process is, uh, there is we, we have seen kind of a, that uh, peace of mind and, and people much more confident that, uh, let's say, it, 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 things will happen, but uh, it will not be a massive thing, as we have seen in the news, some companies and, uh, and, uh, and uh, some massive spread uh, of in some in certain uh, environments. Yeah, I think that reassurance is key, isn't it? Do yes. It, yeah. The, the other thing is, and 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 uh, before I jump into the into the, the other slide, uh, Mark is there is a lot of in government intervention. Uh, yeah. Let's say it's a quite controversial issue because uh, not in uh, all countries uh, infrastructure is the same. Uh, ability to 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 support, uh, let's say, a lockdown and uh, fiscal resources to, let's say, the government to support and and, and uh, you know give uh, resources to companies. Mm -hmm. So sometimes having too many resources on organization kind of overexpose you in, into the context, no? So you even have yeah. to be careful on that. I was sharing with you an, uh, an experience in a, of a, not a, a, that happened to us firsthand, but again, uh, mm -hmm. to, yeah. to, to some friends uh, dealing in another company there, that they have a, a, a spread on their company. Uh, they, they had like a 60 employees, uh, 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 infected at the workplace mm -hmm. and when they, they decide to start testing everyone uh, after uh, the, the test number 200 somebody from the government called them and said please stop testing yeah. so uh, I think that these are the, the, the events that we have to be prepared how to deal and uh, this is why I think uh, engaging with the uh, multiple stakeholders is, uh, it's a uh, very key it's something that I will cover in, in, my, in my in my closing but sure so if there are no questions from the audience, I will I will move to the to the framework, uh, Mark. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. This is a a, a simple framework uh, that I have borrowed from uh, Control Risks. Uh, you know, they are uh, uh, we work with them in, uh, in various topics, and uh, in one of the, the webinars, I, I pulled this uh, very simple uh, very simple framework. Uh, we all engineers we love frameworks, so it's. I found it useful and, and simple. Um, let's say, of course, uh, all what, uh, what I have uh, shared in the, in, in the previous slides is more on a kind of like a coping with the crisis. But I mean, going forward, I think that the, the, the duty of ours is kind of a plan uh, with, uh, with a certain uh, middle term horizon, 18, 24 months, I think it's uh, reasonable to, 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 to plan for. And uh, let's say, Instead of jumping to the to the to the bottom, which is the protocols and the and policies and so on, which is the how you do it, uh, you need to ask yourself the the questions at the at the top, which is more the strategy behind. It's crystal clear that we as a companies cannot uh, control uh, and, and 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 make a, a, a public health policies. So we have to be prepared for the reality that. This is something that we need to deal with. So our, our strategic goal, as I think, should be just to prevent a massive spread of, uh, of the virus in our workplace while working, operating, 
in a safe and a healthy workplace environment. So I think that that should be, let's say, the driven, uh, driving principle uh, behind. Then, of course, uh, questions are pretty basic, uh, but I think that uh, depending on the size of your organization, of course, the when is the key. Let's say some of us have kept working, so uh, this is a, but when you open and how you reopen uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a very relevant uh, question. Uh, the what, let's say, what teams and activities and, and are you going to start bringing online uh, or moving from uh, teleworking to, to back to the workplace? There is a very relevant question and, and reflecting and is uh, why uh, you are going to open or you are going to change as opposed to keep doing certain of the things that you have been, uh, that let's say the, the crisis has forced us to do, for instance, the teleworking. Say so I have seen a number of CEOs coming into the TV for interviews, and saying that they are really rethinking how they are going to approach to to, to teleworking, and uh, even ourselves, we have employees calling and say, "Well, I kind of like it." Uh, so, are you going to be flexible on the teleworking programs? Um, and you also have to bear in mind that we are in the summer in the northern hemisphere. Schools, summer camps are not available, so uh, nurseries are not available. So we have to be extremely mindful on, uh, let's say, working parents, uh, how, how this is uh, going to affect them. And in many countries, there are both uh, parents are, are working parents, so no help. It's, a, it's something very critical. And why you are going to ask people to come back to the workplace as opposed to keep them on teleworking until uh, things are, are better and more certain. Mm -hmm. And then... The other question is uh, more for, for, uh, for, uh, for the industrial system is we have some facilities idle and let's say each company has a different reality, but why to, uh, no, to open or why not to open uh, a given uh, facility? Or on the, on the other hand, or the, other, or the flip side of the coin is perhaps you had the idle a facility for a different reason and now is reasonable to bring it into stream because of uh, uh, logistics, uh, location, um, backup to another facility or whatever. So um, locations, of course, is linked to the, to the previous one. I think that we all have to plan for uh, redundancy in our supply chain. Uh, we have to be ready to uh, shut down some of the facilities either because we we are forced by the by by spread of the disease and is within our own policies and, and protocol or because governments uh, mandate us to do that again so hopefully there is not a second wave uh, but it's something that we cannot rule out and at the planning phase with the famous uh, motto of, uh, of Mr. Churchill planning for the worst hoping for the best I think we are, we are, we are uh, bound uh, to do that. Um, um, and then, of course, you jump, you jump to the, once you have the, the top part, uh, let's say, uh, narrowed down, and again, you have by locations, by countries, and organization as a whole, or, or let's say you go top down. Of course, you jump into protocols, uh, access of people, uh, who is allowed to the plant, who is not allowed to the plant, um, small things is uh, to preparing on, on when you screen and, and, and monitor temperature to be a, a kind of a clean area and uh, so to minimize uh, contact tracing, uh, again exposure, sorry, before uh, you have a test result, um, policies, because again, compensation is a strong issue on, uh, on, 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 on that. Uh, because sometimes you ask a, a group of colleagues that is not even presenting symptoms to stay home because another case is, uh, is, uh, is positive. And then for early employees, uh, three, four days of a lost uh, income, is, is, uh, is, it could be devastating. In, and, and, and mostly after several months of financial distress of, of, all, of over, all, over all of us, it could be very critical going forward. Um, and again, an, another thing that is, uh, uh, let's say, less uh, look after, but uh, that I think that we also need to reflect is uh, the monitor and enforcing structure. So who is going to be the one looking around? Who is going to be, if you allow me, the police in, in, the, in, 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 in the workplace? 
In an industrial setup, it's much more easier because you have a, a clear chain of command, a supervisor, plan manager, HSC manager, HR manager. So it's easy and uh, crystal clear to implement. In an office space, it's much more difficult. And uh, this is one of the, the conversations that uh, I have uh, heard from people is, okay, who should be the one uh, following up? Who is the enforcer? When you have a colleague and, and you have, a, for instance, we do have mandatory face mask in the, in the offices. Um, so who is gonna be the one, if a colleague is not uh, uh, using it, who is the one that is gonna approach it? And, and again, if you have a, a massive open space and you have uh, multiple departments, so there is not a clear manager or the manager is not present there. So, I mean, there are some conversations that has to be uh, held and, uh, and of course, each organization and each culture, each country is different. I'm just kind of uh, bringing it up for, for, for uh, let's say, sure. to, have it, to have it in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, just let me see, there is a question here. Uh, how, how was all the information communicated, communicated throughout the organization? Was well, it filtering it down through the management structure? through meetings, toolbox talks, or was an internal communications campaign distributed through print uh, posters and digital? Okay, it was all the above. So what, what, uh, what we are doing with the communication is uh, uh, there has been a consistent uh, email from HR, uh, to same email to all, every employee in the company. Uh, for uh, working, uh, let's say, all the employees that do not have access to emails, there has been uh, uh, the safety hour or, or the, the morning talk uh, in, the, in the safety moment. And there has been banners, uh, has been uh, uh, flyers, um, let's say multiple uh, visual uh, things that uh, are, are, are being available. Um, now that we have moved a bit on a local uh, country by country situation, each uh, country president is having a, a a monthly, um, a, let's say, webinar with all the employees, a half an hour Q and A, and there is anonymous uh, questions as, as usual, feedback. Uh, so, uh, and then each manager, what we have asked also in most uh, critical locations, uh, managers to have a weekly call, and we also kind of uh, track it, and then we have a kind of a system to to make sure that the let's say managers are taking the lead and they are having, uh, let's say, uh, the, the bottom-up uh, flow of uh, questions and concerns and, and suggestions. Uh, so, so the process, the communication process is uh, both ways, uh, let's say. The, 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 the macro going uh, top-down, uh, concerns bottom up, and, and, and let's say, it, it's never perfect as, a, as usual, but we try to do our best. Mark, if you want, uh, we can move to the to the to the other slides. I think. Just let me check where we are on the timing. Um, so going forward, I think uh, the 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 most challenging and, and here there is no silver bullet for this, but uh, we have seen uh, this before. And again, I, I can relate to. To what I have seen in the in the Ebola, in the in the H1N1, and uh, traveling to Asia frequently and at the, at the aftermath of, of SARS, is a social behavior is of the essence, and uh, fatigue over time is what is is the main threat uh, to to this. Uh, we all know that in the, the the disease is highly contagious, so if you let it uncontrolled, it will uh, it will massively affect. 80% and 90%, I'm not a doctor, but in those numbers, if there is asymptomatic. So it's quite complex to, to know how quick uh, the, the, the disease is spreading in, in, within your system if you don't test it. So this is why I think social behavior for social distancing and, and, and cleaning and, uh, and uh, changing the behavior is of the essence. Uh, for instance, in cafeterias, we have at uh, the very beginning, we stop ask, uh, employees eating in cafeterias. What we have done now is refit and, re and, and, uh, and reorganize uh, uh, the cafeterias 
for instance, what we have done is putting barriers. We have these uh, big round tables in some of uh, our locations for our employees. We have put um, yeah, acrylics, the plastic transparent, uh, so kind of people is confined into their own space, preventing, uh, allowing people to socialize and uh, allowing, uh, let's say, us to manage uh, uh, two, 3,000 employees at the, at, the, at the canteen per day in some of the locations. Uh, which is not an easy logistic, um, but uh, still uh, uh, having and ensuring a minimal, uh, uh, let's say, uh, spread of, uh, in, in those uh, hot spots. Uh, public transportation is a massive issue. And uh, in, uh, in the US, uh, in the location where we are, I think that one of the reasons why we have such a low uh, in index of uh, uh, spread is because of the public transportation, because we are not using it. But uh, for instance, when, uh, when uh, in uh, China and uh, in Africa, wh where we provide, a company provides uh, a, a public transportation, uh, it's, it's very important to have uh, very strong protocols in some places where I think that the companies should, should think is where employees are in some locations in, 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 in developed countries that, uh, let's say, people will take a private transportation and you can set up a, at a reasonable cost. I would say try to think of something on those lines. So at, at least at the very beginning, uh, try to avoid public transportation as much as possible. Uh, in the middle of the crisis, we are also with a lot of uncertainties on the demand and on the supply, and we have lost a lot of customers, personally in the oil and gas. Uh, you, 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 we have been on the, on the news uh, for the, uh, all the wrong reasons. And uh, let's say we are also in the middle, right-sizing the structure, and we don't know what the reality is, but we have to kind of draw scenarios. And I think we are, we are uh, it's a massive because, uh, undertaking, because at the same time that you are trying to get it back to normal and to get people confidence, peace of mind, you have to do some serious uh, redundancy, redundancy processes, which is always complicating the communication and, and motivation on the, of the workforce. So this is a, but is mandatory to do at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, focus on ensuring on sustain, sustainability of operation and across the supply chain. There's a disruption of supplies, disruption of logistics is a massive thing. I think that we all should go and revisit our, our risk map uh, and uh, risk assessment because the conditions have changed. Many supplies, many suppliers, and uh, we have never thought of uh, simple things now are critical because of uh, government intervention in the countries where we operate and because of uh, obvious logistic restriction and obvious disruption in the operations in some countries and companies. Um, as I mentioned in the, in the planning framework, build and optimize uh, redundancy across production assets. I think that is a key. Ready to, to, uh, we have to be ready to close a facility and a location if required and mandated. It, it can happen any time, hopefully it doesn't, but we have to plan for that. One thing that we have seen uh, always, and this uh, crisis has been uh, true more than ever, is a uh, collaboration with customers and community stakeholders. And also that is particularly key with uh, suppliers, small suppliers that are, uh, are central to our operations in, in uh, remote location and countries. They don't have the ability to massively look, go and uh, look for resources around. What we have been doing in many, many countries is we have been buying and also uh, giving to our uh, uh, suppliers, mostly at the very beginning of the crisis, just to make sure they that they will be following our protocols and uh, that they, we can ensure that they keep operating and, uh, and, uh, and uh, let's say their, their continuity is our continuity. But at the same time, being uh, good citizens, we have a, re a report for some of our facilities we have uh, started to produce uh, PPEs like, uh, like masks for hospitals and, commu and, and community hospitals in, in some of the communities we, are, we have uh, operated. Because of our footprint and R&D capabilities, we, uh, we also are involved in several projects for producing uh, ventilators. We have acquired ventilators, we have given, uh, even donated uh, quite a few of them to, to several hospitals where we are. 
and this is giving you credibility. It's giving you um, engagement with public health authorities. It's giving you credibility with the unions. It's giving you credibility with your labor force. It's giving you credibility with your, uh, uh, let's say, public authorities at the local level that are the ones that has to, uh, you know, uh, decide whether to keep you open or not. So it's a it's a it's a it's a um, it's an effort that we let's say given the size and and and, and the relevance and uh, that we have in some of those communities we can afford to do but it's also true and it's also valid at a smaller scale uh, even for a smaller companies because uh, at the end of the day it will give you it will give you um, a, let's say ability to to understand also what is happening and early early warning on, on some of the things happening in your community of course it's uh, more uh, true than ever uh, and in going to the question of uh, before having a, a, a lean and a frictionless uh, organization is always helping and in this uh, uh, rapid moving crisis uh, being agile and, and, and adaptable it will allow us to to, to to surf through this crisis and of course uh, last but not least uh, monitor specific uh, risks and, and you know uh, there are massive issues with the IT delinquency um, in, and we have seen a number of attempts and uh, we monitor let's say uh, breach uh, frequency and a number of attempts to our organization and this has been a massive spike people working remotely uh, information flowing uh, these uh, zooms and, and uh, you know uh, multiple uh, communication channels has been an uh, an opportunity that uh, let's say those in in uh, cyber delinquency has taken so each of us is a different on level of preparedness and, and monitor but i mean it's something that uh, to be aware of Financial distress of our suppliers and customers, a massive. We have been uh, changing a number of uh, criteria there. And uh, let's say, uh, of course, this is something that we all uh, can relate with, but I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's another thing that it will continue worsening, so uh, to, to keep in mind. And uh, something that, that is um, also, obvious is deterioration of the workplace environment and again as a uh, fatigue sky is, uh, is uh, burning people out a uh, reduction on, uh, on, uh, on redundancies implemented um, social uh, distress in, 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 uh, in local communities uh, uh, so, let's say so we have to be prepared also for sec sec uh, disruption security wise so protocol security protocols in those areas exposed is something that people should revisit. Um, I don't want to make uh, countries, uh, but I mean, it's, it's something that uh, each of us should reflect. Uh, and one thing, the one last uh, thing that before I, I go to the Q&A, the other day when I was in, a, in one of uh, on these uh, discussions, there was something that uh, pop up uh, and, 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 uh, and kind of called my attention, which is uh, companies and HR structures should be prepared in, in office uh, environments to, to, for a kind of spike of boy, violence in the workplace. Um, and again, this is different in each country, culture and reality. But uh, so one uh, advice is to, 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 to organize some kind of training uh, to managers, line managers, to, for early detection of uh, dangerous behavior and, and conflict escalation. And again, going back to the point of who is going to enforce this in, in the office place, um, to think of this uh, to hand on hand, no? uh, give tools to the managers because at the end of the day, it's the people that is there and, uh, and is the one uh, uh, looking after uh, the employees and the well being of the employees are the ones that also have to have the tools uh, and having some consistency and guidelines and having those conversations, is, I think it will be much more easier and, and, and also will give again employees a peace of mind, peace of mind equals productivity. Uh, so I think that, is a, that, is a, that will be my last, my last take before going to the questions. Diego, that's, that's been fantastic. Thank you not only for your time, but for uh, 
fending those questions that I can't see. So you've, you've pretty much nailed the, the, the whole session on its own. So I, I appreciate it. Um, guys, for everyone that's listening, uh, I hope you found that beneficial. I think there's, yeah, I've had previous conversations with, with Diego leading up to this. Um, it, it's been really interesting, you know, chatting with him over the last couple of weeks. Um, I hope you found that, you know, great advice, great insights. Diego, I think everyone will have found it beneficial um, in some shape or form. So if you have any uh, other questions, guys, I know I can't see them, but they will pop up in the screen for, for Diego at his end. At the uh, moment, feel, feel yeah, I just, I just go ahead, look, going through the chat. Um, there is one question about uh, the testing, working with the local authorities or, or whether that was good enough or not. Yes, uh, let's say when, we, when I said that we acquired testing capabilities is at the very beginning, the problem was uh, getting access to the kits, which are the disposable uh, things, elements to, to take the samples. So uh, those were not available. So this is what we bought. Uh, in some cases, we also help a hospital with the, with the chemicals, the reactives and so on, but always working with uh, the public, uh, local public uh, health authorities. Um, uh, yeah. When uh, one company, Abbott, uh, published that they have these quick uh, kits uh, available, uh, I think it was a month ago, we tried to acquire those, uh, those uh, kits. Uh, Abbott uh, is not ready to, to sell to, let's say, to private companies yet because of uh, limited availability and pressure from governments and hospitals that are the main customers to, to first give to them. But I think that now uh, in, 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 mo in many countries, uh, or at least the countries where we are, let's say the, that uh, testing capability is not an issue. There are some countries that still is, um, mainly in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Latin America at the moment, where it's uh, kind of the, 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 the peak of the, of the, of the spread is, 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 is happening. Uh, there is still some, uh, some uh, limitations and, you know, government is getting very political about it. So I, I don't want to get into this in the, in the public mm -hmm. forum. I'm happy to share and, uh, in private, but I mean, yes, it's uh, something yeah. that, uh, that uh, we have been always in, in contact with public authorities. Just uh, another thing is in, in Italy, let's say the, the, the holding company that I belong to or I work for, is the largest uh, operator of, uh, of hospitals. Uh, so, so we also, let's say, we are having a lot of insights because we run hospitals as well. So, uh, and we were obviously overwhelmed by the situation as uh, everyone was. And then, and, but I mean, it's, uh, so we got, we got uh, quite a few insights and, uh, and early, early, early information from within uh, on what was happening and how to prepare for that. That's great, Diego. Is there, is there any more questions coming in? I see the, the screens popping up. Uh, about mental health, um, mental health is something that uh, it's very different country to country, and um, we are uh, we are uh, dealing with uh, with uh, HRs, let's say people coming to uh, managers, and and uh, and uh, and uh, asking for resources. We we don't have yet a very consistent uh, program in place. It's something that may happen. And again, uh, I'm not here uh, making representation of my company, but I have seen in the past in some of the countries have worked. It will come financial distress of uh, early employees. Uh, I can tell you in Africa, employees, uh, the one employee is to support a much larger family than in, the, in, the, in, the, in, 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 in what we are familiar with. Uh, Say. So as those uh, brothers, sisters lose their, their jobs, uh, they are expected to support them. So sometimes you have to implement kind of a loan, a, a mini loans to employees or bridge loans to employees. Mm -hmm. So it's something that, uh, let's, say public, let's say, mental health is linked to, to financial distress. So uh, we do that uh, and, let's say, I, I'm not... Uh, in, in the, in the, in, here in the U.S. is not something that we are discussing at the moment, but I have seen that in the past and it works and helps if the company has the kind of the financial uh, possibility to, to, to do that. 
uh, and it, 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 it helps a lot. It's always the controversial sure. how you draw a line and how you do it uh, according to the labor laws and so on. But it's something that if you, if you kind of uh, manage to work around, it's uh, highly valuable for employees. Yeah, and, and with and very high impact as well. No? Yeah, it makes sense, Diego. Uh, I don't see the, the whole chat of the of the questions uh, that were posted earlier, but I don't know if you can, Mark. If not, I just want to say thank you guys for the opportunity to 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 share with you what my uh, my take and experience uh, so far has been. As many of you, uh, we are uh, going through it uh, and we are learning every day uh, new things. As I said before, and uh, my take on, on the whole process and having uh, listened to, let's say, very relevant uh, CEOs. I was uh, listening to the CEO of Dow, Dow Chemicals uh, two days ago in, 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 in the Bloomberg Channel and, and others before I was uh, listening to the CEO of uh, Fiat. Uh, uh, Ferrari, McLaren, because uh, automakers are coming to stream in Europe. So at the end of the day, they are all uh, come to the same uh, view bullets. Is you need to have uh, good uh, ear detection, let's say the screening, the testing, and the contact tracing, uh, supported by protocols, policies, and what you do, and uh, lost income to employees goes. Uh, with all of that all together. Um, redundancy and risk mapping of the supply chain, a PPE, social distancing, and changing behavior. Um, mm -hmm. No matter if you are a Boeing or a Dow Chemical, or you are the mama and papa shop with four or five employees, uh, that the same uh, true will apply. The same tools for simple they are, uh, it do not make it uh, less effective, and I think they say uh, we not we do need do not need to overcomplicate or over rationalize. And uh, I'm a I'm a foodie, and the best food is the one uh, simply prepared, few ingredients, very well combined, and as always in strategy, execution is all. It's like you can have uh, the right elements, but all is going to be down to the execution, 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 and the leadership. Of uh, from the top to managers, so this is why I think that uh, some training into the middle management is going to be of the essence on the execution part. And of course, we have to do this consistently for the next 18, 24 months, and uh, which is not a small undertaking. Just one uh, before I say uh, goodbye. Of course, thank you to everyone for listening. Colin McCarty just uh, asked a question on whether I believe that the 18 months is uh, before we can relax uh, control measures. Uh, definitely, it's uh, the disease is highly contagious, and believe me, it's the, the other day I was having a coffee with a friend. They say, "Do you know anyone that has uh, that had it?" Because he's uh, kind of a, a political belief that he, be he believes that this is a hoax. Okay, and I was telling him, "Yes, it is. It is." Uh, we have colleagues; uh, they have the lost, uh, and actually, one co we have lost one of the colleagues in in Italy. He he, he lost his mother his father, his sister, and then he died. So uh, once he gets into the, into the, into the uh, um, let's say, uh, household, it gets, uh, everyone gets it. Um, and I mean, uh, it's, um, so this is why we need to prevent this uh, cross uh, spread. Uh, I was talking to my son yesterday, one of his uh, schoolmates, uh, he went to the spring, uh, spring break uh, down to the, uh, with his friends uh, here in the U.S. and all got it. So mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, and you may have heard this uh, case also in uh, Austin University, where 70 people went to Mexico, the uh, 48 came back positive. So I mean, yeah, it, it's uh, it's very difficult, and I mean, it's uh, it's uh, gonna take uh, it's gonna take time. This is why if we want to get uh, sustain operations, we need to be sure and we need to be clear to people that this is something serious. And we need to, 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 to change social behavior to, to prevent spread and it's uncontrolled spread. Spread will happen yeah. and perhaps it's good according to our public health authorities uh, that we should be getting it at the control speed. But I mean, it's, it's for another call and I'm not an expert on that. So I'm uh, only, only, only to chat over a, a coffee or a beer.
Sure. No, I, I think you're right, David. I, I also spoke to someone this morning um, who's who's in the Middle East. Um, I think I shared this with you earlier. I, I spoke to him about three weeks ago in terms of where they were at. Um, you know, sort of relaxation of the of the restrictions, and they had a curfew, obviously still imposed. But um, I spoke to him again um, yesterday, actually, not no this morning, yesterday. And three weeks later, so they had they had uh, a relaxation, and they were open from um, you know eight in the morning to ten at night. And I know it's obviously Eid starting um, today and tomorrow now, and they've they've changed the restrictions, but they've tightened them up uh, slightly again, pulling it back to eight p.m. And, and there's been some issues. But the reason for bringing that up that he mentioned was they were at three hundred cases a day. Um, three weeks ago, and now they're up to six, seven hundred, just with that slight relaxation over the over the last three weeks. Um, yeah, and it's something we have suffered also in Saudi, and and this is something that this is why for the planning you have to go to certain level of detail that is unthinkable. For instance, if, uh, we oh, we don't have a positive cases in our employees, but the employees live in a quarter of the city that is curfew, and the employees are not allowed to come to work. So then you are losing half of your labor force uh, yeah. because of that. So, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, there are scenarios that we have to be prepared for uh, that are hard to envision beforehand, but question this. People have to make those questions and be aware that this may happen. Um, it happened to us also uh, working in, a, in, in our, one of our facilities in Pennsylvania. Because the two, some of the people live across the state border, and some states were having different regulations than the other ones. So, mm -hmm. and about the uh, and borders, uh, for some time, uh, some states uh, took some rest movement of rest uh, restriction of movement. So, I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be difficult. Hopefully, as some uh, virologists are saying, uh, there are a school of thought that this may disappear and fade away. Hopefully, that is the case, but mm -hmm. I don't know. We cannot, we cannot bet over the future of our organization and companies. No. To lack. I mean, uh, I think that there is, there is an easier way, of, more central way of doing money. I mean, yeah, agreed. And listen, you, you, thanks again, Diego. Your, your, okay. your insights have been brilliant today. Okay. Thoroughly enjoyed it as normal. Hope everyone else has. I'm sure they will. Yes. Thank you, guys. Stay safe.